my first memory of Ghana, I th there's actually a smell when you land at the airport. I think in humidity, at what, I was seven years old. I was six actually when I first went to Ghana. And running out of the plane, and me and my sister hand in hand, and the heat just hitting us. Um, followed closely by chasing lizards and I never did catch one. I had the first opportunity to ever go there in 1995. I was 15 years old and I got on this dusty Ghana Airways plane with old school upholstery from the 1960s and when I tell you I came off this plane and the heat licked my face like nothing I'd ever experienced before. Uh, I just remember arriving at the airport and um, watching my mother's whole body language change and realising just how comfortable she was. And I think I took my cue from her. I was with my sister who's a little older than me. Um, and I remember just coming out from the airport and, and seeing all of that famous red soil that other people have talked so much about. And just realising just how comfortable my mother was. Um, but I just remember loads of palm trees from the airport. I don't know how I remember that. Um, my, my mother said I was a bit of a strange child. So I remember that. Um, and I remember the red clay floors. I don't know if that's a subconscious thing, but maybe I've seen it on TV before. Don't quote me on that. Playing in Roman Ridge in Accra, it's just hanging out. There was a massive mango tree outside the house, which I wasn't allowed to climb. And to this day, I can't stand mangoes because I wasn't allowed to climb the tree. I know it's a bad thing, but yeah. Yeah. I think everyone who's been to Accra will know Abbey Gardens. That's one of my first memories there and, and the, the crashed helicopter that's there. Um, and I think generally also being so surprised at how open and how friendly everyone was. Everyone was just so interested in me and my brother and my sister and what we did and was so welcoming, which is quite a strange thing, I think, to experience when you've always lived in London. When I was about six years old, playing on my dad's farm with the chickens. I would say 37 Military Hospital, which is where I was born, but you might not remember that far back. Um... My first memory was probably running around the garden in our home in Burma camp. My father was a naval officer and we grew up on this big military base and um, basically we would just run around the garden, run around the streets and we actually, we had, I remember we had this, um, this little secret route to get to the back of the airport from where we were because Burma camp backed onto the airport and we used to used to go there and take roller skates and roll around the edge of the runway, which is really, really, really very stupid, but <laughs> we had <have> fun. <laughs> wow, that's a long, long, long time ago. And, you know, it's actually happiness as well. You see, you can see, you know, I think maybe sunshine does that to people, but you can see that there's so, there's so much warmth and friendliness. Something which you don't really find as much in the UK. I really and truly felt the vibe and the energy coming from the sun as I arrived in this country. The smell, the food, the people. It was my first experience of a totally black society in itself. So my earliest memories are of like, rah, this is where I come from and this is where I truly belong because I've been somewhere where I can see that this cannot be my source and my origin. So. My earliest memories of Ghana are just beautiful. I mean, the vibe is just beyond description. I really, really and truly loved it and appreciated it. And I was, I was just overjoyed to get back to Ghana and have se secondary education over there, actually more to secondary school all the way for a good seven years of my life. That definitely made me the person I am. My first memory of Ghana. Love you don't even know this. I actually went to school in Ghana uh, for about like, a year and a half. Um, the most painful uh, time of my life. I, when I was in Ghana, I was very like rebellious and stuff like that. And what I like about Ghana, they, they place you um, in, in the classroom. So you've got like 30, say you've got 36 children or whatever. And everyone at the end of the year gets some places. You can be the best child, you can be the worst child. And I thought I was something like 31 or something like that because it was a new culture to me. I didn't really know what to expect. And I got 31. My parents beat me. They beat you. You know, like, you know, the, you know the spoon that the wooden spoon that you used to. <laughs> The stew. I got beat with that, so I got beat. I had blood coming out my hand and, and, and stew as well. You understand? It's ridiculous. But um, my, yeah, I think, I think that's the, the first memory that comes when I went to school in Ghana. It was just a massive, massive experience, and I think it really makes me appreciate everything I have around me now. Like running water, seriously, because they, they got running water, but you have to run and go get it. 
my first memory of Ghana actually touching Ghanaian soil was actually rather late in life, in 1994 when I was 26 years old. And I was just coming out of Kotoka International Airport, having been hassled by some of the local area boys, but then being greeted by the warmth of an extended family who knew far more about me than I knew about them. It didn't feel like home instantly, but after a while, I knew there was a deep connection that would never leave me. Primarily, it was a, it was a culture shock. Um, I didn't get to Ghana until um, quite late in life. And I'd obviously been used to a lot of the creature comforts here. Uh, after I got over my initial shock, just the, the beauty of it, the scenery, the, the, the earth and the, the soil and the trees. I know it sounds so um, hippie-like, but just how beautiful the whole countryside was struck me. Uh, and then meeting my family for the first time. Uh, obviously, I didn't have enough time to meet all of them because there's about three and a half million of them. Um, I went to Ghana for the first time when I was four and um, we went swimming at the beach. And black people in swimming don't mix anyway from day dot. Uh, my sister decided to go out far and I remember her just getting further and further away uh, to the point where she was just waving uh, like a dot in the distance. And um, there was a lifeguard who luckily decided to go out and see if she was okay. And um, he brought her back, but let's just say the tide wasn't her friend. Uh, and that, unfortunately, is my earliest memory of Ghana. That and plantain that burnt my tongue, but that's another story. Eating good food, pounding for food. I'd say my first memory of Ghana would be the language, because, like I said, I was brought up by my parents with a strong Ghanaian culture from a very young age. So much so, in fact, that before I could speak English, I could speak tree. So even going to early school and nursery, we had to be taught English and whatnot. But obviously, we've got it now, and I've perfected the English language. But prior to this, I was fluent in tree, so I'd say the first thing that I remember from Ghana is the language, and I think it's a beautiful language. It's the language of love. Yes. Uh -huh. um, singing songs in Ghana tree. Um, uh, my, my first memory of Ghana is not actually in Ghana. I just remember like when I was like three or four, I had this textbook, and my mum was on the cover of it. But she was like she was like a model like when she was younger so i always used to look at this textbook and it was my mum and i always used to look at it it was about ghana and it was about like Ghanaian history and stuff and i always was like yo when am i going when am i going my mum was on the front of the cover i used to think she was famous uh, um, and the fact that i still get beaten up or slapped <laughs> by someone who's not a member of my family if i was misbehaving and being rude talking back to my mother and also i remember Putting my thumb up and getting slapped for that as well, because uh, you're not supposed to put your thumb up, and I think that's a rude, rude gesture. When I was younger, I was naughty in school, yeah. So my mum, when like they were going on holiday, I never got the holiday, like because of like my bad school reports and that. So, but from I always used to ask them, what is it like? Because obviously I'm spending my summer in England. So I'm like, so what is Ghana like? Then they're always telling me how it's a lovely place, it's a lot of friendly people. Um, it's sunny, the, that is, um, the club life is great out there, um, people have felt like they've got beaches and stuff like that and people may not know all these sort of things and I want to experience it one day but from my, what my parents and they used to tell me, they're always going on about the, the sun, the weather's great, the people are friendly, the food is great and etc. And one day I would, like, I would love to go there, even I'm going to go there, within a year I'm going to go there. Playing football barefoot for the first time. First memory of Ghana is the fact that I was born here. To be honest, the first time I ever went to Ghana was in 1994. My dad was bending my ears left, right, and center and saying, Come on, we need to go to Ghana, we need to go to Ghana. And to be honest, I didn't really want to go because after watching all those BBC programs with those people starving in Africa and all of that, I was like, No, 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 I'm not really interested. Let me just pretend I'm Jamaican and that's cool. But then what happened was he managed to convince me to get on the plane. And I went to Ghana and I came out of the airport and I saw a brand new Mercedes Benz, the car that I was dreaming about buying in Ghana. So for me, I was like, rah, man's I'm over here are flossing like this. And I'm here in London struggling with my day job. Nah, that kind of changed my whole mentality around. And from that, I started to invest back home. Um, seeing how big my family is really. I thought I had a lot of family here in, in London and in Europe, but I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cousins who, to this day, we're all still in touch. Hmm. 
Yes. What else? I don't remember anything else. <laughs>